President Trump delivering his second State of the Union address, touting America's economy and vowing to end China's theft of U.S. jobs. But the March 1st deadline for a trade deal between the two countries quickly approaching. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin weighed in on current negotiations during a CNBC interview earlier. Take a look. Well, we had very productive meetings last week here in D.C. with the vice premier. Ambassador Lighthizer and myself and a large team are on our way to Beijing next week. Uh, we are committed to continue these talks. We're putting in an enormous amount of effort to try to hit this deadline and get a deal. So that's our objective. Joining us now, Whedon and Company Chief Global Strategist and Head of Derivative Strategy, Michael Purvis, along with Payne Capital Management co-founder Ryan Payne. Michael, let's go ahead and start with you. We had that soundbite from Mnuchin this morning uh, talking a little bit more about China. As much as the president talked about last night, he did miss some of the key aspects that Wall Street was looking for. Real progress on these trade negotiations was certainly one point. Yeah, and one word you really heard was structural reform. When you hear the words structural reform, it just sounds sounds like not a matter of two or three weeks, right? It, it sounds like months and maybe quarters. And I think that's one of the reasons why you saw underperformance in emerging market equities today. You saw weakness in the Chinese uh, currency and so forth. So I think that's, that, that was one of the things where we're just not really sure where this key risk factor is likely to trend. Ryan, when we started the day, uh, you know, stock market was in negative territory, bounced up a little bit into the green. Now it's back. It's been a very choppy session. So I think the market is reacting to the overall State of the Union last night. But this China piece is still holding people back. I don't know. I mean, I think this one that may be just priced in, right? I mean, you know, right now, equities are at a pretty reasonable valuation. Um, so I think anything that we get, I and mean, we're getting surprises in the positive on earnings, which says the economy is probably stronger than we've factored in. So I think as long as our economy is strong and China's weakening, that's probably going to bode well for us to get a really good deal. The president taking a lot of credit last night for the progress that he has made on the uh, economy, unemployment <laughs> uh, rate, very low, 4 percent right now. Jobs created more than 300,000 in the last report. This is pretty substantial when investors are looking at the data, but also when the Fed is looking at the data as well. Right, Michael? Yeah, I mean, we've had this really pretty dramatic Fed pivot, and that's part of the reasons why the S&P 500 is up 9 percent. Just a quick point on Ryan's, which is also that we're we're going into technical resistance here, and so you know we're going to sort of putter through that a little bit while we're while the market's trying to figure out which way to go beyond that. There, but I think on, on, with respect to you know we we have this condition right now reinforced by these really strong jobs numbers, but there, it's inflation-like growth, which is very constructive for risk assets over the broader term. Um, there, and you know that really kind of defined the 2018 picture was we had inflation-like growth, and what are we seeing here? We're seeing a lot of hiring but not a, 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 a scary wage. We're not seeing a scary inflation acceleration. Yeah. No, I call that economic nirvana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, we have basically, you know, grow, uh, jobs are growing, you have uh, low unemployment, and on top of that, inflation's low, and now the Fed's basically putting the, uh, the brakes on monetary policy. It's right. like it doesn't get better than this. It doesn't. So how right. do you position yourself when you're looking at a lot of these stocks who, uh, that have made big jumps, really, essentially, especially in the technology space? How do you position yourself as an investor? I mean, bullishly. <laughs> I think, uh, and I would say even globally bullish. Uh, you mentioned emerging markets. I just think on a relative basis, you, know, you have lower multiples right now with higher growth rates overseas. You've got to take advantage of that along with the U.S. EM has typically done well, but suffering a little bit now. So would you sort of look globally? Europe's dealing with the Brexit issue. China's got their own growth problems and still say that the U.S. is the best house in the neighborhood. Well, in certain respects, it's the best house in the neighborhood. Obviously, China's growing at twice the rate the United States is, um, you know, on yeah. any given day, right, uh, there. But I think the way I kind of look at the world from a global equity allocation point of view is increasingly we're sort of talking about U.S. and China, U.S. and China, whereas European equities and Japanese equities are, you know, you could all call them like sog havens. And you're, like, you're not going to lose a lot of money in them necessarily if the economy performs, but they're, you're, you don't have game-changing stocks like the FANGs and the mega cap techs that are really driving high margin, consistent uh, earnings growth, which is what we've seen out of FANG over the last several years. Mm -hmm. What about the tax cuts? Because a lot of corporations, individuals are going to be filing. They're not necessarily sure what to expect, and they haven't necessarily made plans to spend the cash that they're supposed to be saving as a result of right. those cuts as well. That money was supposed to get funneled back into the economy. Yeah, well, I think bottom line is we know that wages went up last year. We know unemployment is low. We know the consumer is feeling good. So I suspect, um, you know, 
you know, across the board, people did get a tax break last year. It's going to be very, very well. It's going to bode well for the consumer mm -hmm. is my best guess. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it may have been overstated how much the consumer was going to benefit from the tax point of view, and there's a little bit of give back. Uh, certainly, a lot of discussion about that right now. Having said that, you know, throw on low, relatively low gasoline prices, mm -hmm. the consumers are in pretty good shape. There's a couple of interesting sentiment indicators out there from University of Michigan and also the small business CEO surveys that are very interesting because you know, soft the the boom in survey data right after the Trump election was one of the defining parts of the post uh, Trump. Uh, economic rally and, and market boom but but the the uh, those have retrenched a lot when you look at things what's going to happen with capex 12 months forward or how does the consumer look at the economy one year forwards not today those have been plummeting there and so i think that you have to realize that this is not you know this is going to be you have to watch that data quickly to see how consumers behave through the year yeah and recession risk was certainly something on everybody's mind it seems to be dwindling just a little yeah they were dead wrong yeah <laughs> i think that's the bottom line so i think the the bar has been set so low right now and that's why you're seeing earnings come in better than expectations is because we just thought things were going to be way more abysmal than they actually are gentlemen thank you so much you great bet. to see you as always